Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at the kind of things that you can format on a chart in Microsoft Excel. I have a very simple chart here based on this data. The data is the wrong way around. I want to see Canada in my columns and to do that I'll need to select on my chart, go up to chart design and I want to switch the row and column. That way you can switch between the way that the data is plotted on your chart. I'd also like to increase the size of the actual elements here. They're a little bit narrow. So with any one of them selected, so you can see I've got all these light green selected. Here I've got all the light purple selected. Right click and choose format data series. It was already open over here. That won't always be the case. You'll leave series overlap set to 100%. That's really important because if you don't, things are going to start breaking up. But you can decrease the gap width and that's going to make your columns a little bit wider. For my chart title here, I'd like to make it the exact same title as I have for my data. So I'm going to click on this object to select it. I'm going over here to the formula bar. I'm going to press the equal sign and I'm going to click in the cell here that contains this data and press enter. You can see now that the title of the chart is the exact same thing as is the title for the data. So if the title changes, then the chart title is going to change as well. I want to use a different font here, so I'm going to select this object. I'm going to the home tab of the ribbon, easiest way to do it, and go and pick up the font that I use, which is ASP, ASAP Condensed. So I'm just going to do that for each of these objects. Now, charts should always be self-explanatory. You should be able to look at the chart and understand exactly what's going on. Right now, we don't technically know what these are. They probably are gross sales, but it would be appropriate to label that. So I'm going to click the plus sign. I'm going to access titles. Here, you can add primary horizontal and or primary vertical. I'm going to add both. So this is going to be dollars. And across here, this is going to be geographical regions. I'm going back to the home tab of the ribbon and I'm going to pick up the correct font for these. Now, if something like that happens to you, just click away from the chart, reselect this object and go and try again. It's just that we were in editing mode and now we're back into change the format mode. This is what's called a legend and you can place a legend in various areas of your chart. So if your panel here is not visible, you can just right click the object and format the legend. You may want to, for example, put the legend up here in the top right. There's plenty of room for it. In actual fact, I'd like it to go over the chart a little bit. But you can see that in doing that, we're seeing the chart lines through it. Well, with this object selected, we can go up here to the fill on the home tab of the ribbon and we could fill this with white. And so it's now going to block out the lines underneath it. Of course, we could fill it with any color. Now you can see that the chart itself has shrunk a little bit. So when you want to format a specific area of the chart, you can go to the Format tab and up here is a list of all the elements in the chart. And what this area is, is called the plot area. The chart area, which is the thing at the top here, is the whole thing. But the plot area is the actual plot. And so what I can come in here and do is just stretch it out. I could also make it a bit taller. So again, going back to the plot area, I can make it taller or shorter. Let me just bring my legend into the position I want it to appear in. You can also adjust the title. All these are movable. Even if it's got a formula for linking to this cell over here, it's still easily able to be moved. Right now you can see that our top axis value is 1.8 million, when in actual fact all the data is below 1.6 million. We could change that by clicking here on the vertical axis and we can go across here to the axis options. So it's in format axis and it's in axis options. This is the maximum value. We could make it 1600000, in other words, 1.6 million and then the top value will be 1.6 million. You want to make sure of course that you use a value that is equal to or slightly in excess of the highest point of your chart. But that again just makes everything a little bit, gives everything a little bit more space. Now you can also add a data table to this chart. So let's just click on here and let's go and add a data table. A data table is really helpful because it actually shows the data. So again, with that 
thought in mind that we want our chart to be self-explanatory wherever it goes, it might be a good idea to add a data area. Again, all of this data area is not in the correct font, so I'm going to choose my font. Because I've got coloured legends here and a legend up here, I don't need both. Now you can remove the legend from the data area. Let's just go to the data area. You can see show legend keys. You could take that off. It's probably not the smartest idea. The best idea would probably be to actually take the legend out entirely. So just delete it because it doesn't actually need it because all the data that we need, all the information that we need is actually already in here. Now if we wanted to draw attention to the fact that the California software sales are pretty good, let's add something to do that. You want to make sure that your chart is selected before you do this because then whatever we do is going to be embedded in the chart. I'm going to insert and then shapes and I'm going to grab a little thought bubble here. I'm just going to drag it into my document. This little yellow option allows me to to anchor it to the object I'm interested in. I'm going to right click it. What I'm looking for here is the edit option. So if you don't get it the first time, cl clicking or right clicking until you get edit text. Now you can scale this. You can center your data by just selecting over it. Again on the home tab of the ribbon just use your center option. And of course I'll want to be using the font that I'm using for the rest of my work. Just going to scale it down a little bit. We can move its placement. We can move the pointer so it's pointing at the right place. But you'll see that well, whenever I grab my chart, the actual shape is moving with it. That's really critical. You don't want your chart to break up into little pieces. Now one last thing that you might want to do is these are quite large numbers. We could actually format them as millions. Let's click on that to select it and let's go and choose our number options. So they're here in the axis options, number, and there's actually an ability here to add your own number format. So what I'm going to do is unlink it from the source and I'm just going to delete all of this. I've only got positive numbers so I'm going to type 0.0, .0 and then two commas and then a set of quote marks I'm going to write million and close quote marks and just click add. And you can see now that we're getting, because of this number format, this 0, 0.0, we're getting 1.6 million, 1.4 million. So these numbers are perhaps a little bit easier to read if you like. So you do have an option of formatting the numbers in the chart separately to the data in the worksheet. So these are not measured in millions. This data is not measured in millions, but the overall chart, the axis is being measured in millions. Typically as you're working with your chart you can just click on an object, right click and you'll get options for formatting it. So you can change the format of an entire series or you can change the format of a particular object. You can change the way the grid lines look, the chart itself, a whole lot of things that you can do here in Microsoft Excel. But always have in the back of your mind this thing needs to make sense. It needs to be self-evident what it is that you're showing to your audience needs to be simple enough to read very quickly and easily. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.